This is why it's the last module in the delegate program. You have to understand why, you know, we are um, talking about applications. Um, and it, it has to do with uh, understanding the source of gravity, the san uh, understanding the structure of space time and the fabric of space and the implication of that fabric. Uh, on the structure of uh, reality all around us. And, um, and from these new physics, a whole new set of information comes to us. Um, of course, there's the solution to the proton that tells us that actually matter. And uh, by the way, like a week and a half ago, I, uh, with the help of Dr. Mirabel Baker, we solve for the electron and it's extremely accurate as well. It's, it's an amazing thing. The Bohr atom and the electron comes right out. And it's telling us that actually uh, space time is the source of mass, not just the source of gravitation as Einstein described it. Meaning that um, the idea that there's some kind of object that's separated by space and that's separated from space is incorrect. That is what we call an object, which in the case of the electron and the proton is basically an electrostatic charge in space. Uh, there's not like a billiard ball there. There's not anything we can like, you know, play pool with, you know, it's not like a little thing that uh, a little marble down there. It's actually a little charge. And that's why the charge radius, the proton is called that way is because all we can say about the proton is in that region of space, there's a little charge, right? Um, well, you know, um, turns out that that charge, or what we call matter, is a consequence of the Planck oscillator, the electromagnetic Planck oscillators, um, coherently co-moving in a region of space. So basically what we call not space, that is what we call matter or reality is actually just a function of the space in a certain, you know, angular momentum relationship, um, which produces like a little vortex in space. If you have a vortex in your bath because you pulled a plug, you wouldn't say, oh, here's the vortex over here and here's the water over here. And those are two different things. You would say, oh, the vortex is a dynamic of the water. So just like that, an atom or matter is a dynamics of space, uh, space being the quantum fluid that is uh, making up all the material world. Find it's interesting, like uh, recently people have come up with uh, quantum fluids like that to describe um, some of the structure of space time at the quantum level and came up with a whole new uh, cosmology, cosmogenesis, where there's no Big Bang. I think you, some of you might have seen this come out in the news last week. So, you know, people are finally getting to it. Um, Space time acts like a fluid. It's a fluid just like water is made out of molecules, hydrogen, oxygen. Um, the uh, structure of space is made out of little planks. And um, these little Planck oscillators are the source of mass and gravitation. And so uh, it's not quite as Einstein described it where mass curve space time and produce the gravitational field, which he was never happy with the part, you know, where mass curves space time because mass is described in his equation as the stress energy tensor. And he called it like sand in his hand. He couldn't never pinpoint what the heck that is mass, you know? Um, so basically it is saying there's no such a thing. What we call mass or energy is actually just a function of the space. It's like the bath water spinning in that region where over there in the back of the bath, it's not spinning. So we see it as 
just water or in our case, just empty space or at least space, maybe not empty, but we don't see matter there. Um, so um, so that, that really kind of starts the story of how the implications and certainly what are the applications of such an understanding. <laughs>